It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and there's no love lost between these NFC North foes. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. All that and more coming up next. This is such a special place. You drive through the streets of Green Bay, no tall buildings, quaint houses, and then boom, right there in the middle of the neighborhood is iconic Lambeau Field. Today, we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. CD, it is officially a new era here in Green Bay. After a few years of Willie Woney with Aaron Rodgers, it is officially time to see Jordan Love quarterbacking the Green Bay Packers. And we'll find out what lessons he's absorbed along the way, how well he's mastered the playbook, the respect he's gained from his teammates in the locker room. We know that love is in the air in Green Bay. The key is, what will love do through the air? Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season, as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. The Florida Atlantic man, Greg Joseph, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lambeau. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the new look Packers set to go to work. And at the helm here in 2023, a lot of eyes on this man in his fourth NFL season, Jordan Love. This is set up now to be the true beginning of Love's NFL career because he's finally out from under the shadow of Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay is giving him this season to prove he can be their starter. Four years after he was drafted in the first round, we'll find out Love is the next decade-long starter for the Green Bay Packers. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They tried it there on the opening drive, but that falls incomplete. Now a second and 10. A guy coming off a career high in rushing yards last year. Here's Aaron Jones. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Here's Love. all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field, right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage. And they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Play action this time with Love. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Dean Lowry drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. But that had to feel good for Dean Lowry, who made the move from Green Bay to Minnesota as a free agent in the offseason. 
hopes that he's going to have his best year as a pass rusher yet. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season, his best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. First down, here's Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, grab that dagger play, grab that play and just finish them off right now, because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try them out a stand before they're backed up even further. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action. Cousins. And this one is incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Cousins again. And this pass broken up. Well, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. No surprise at all. They're looking for the big man early in this one. The only surprise for them, he couldn't hang on to the pass. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Of the rookie Jaden Reed deep for the Packers. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight yard line. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have a Packers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. I like the call on third and two. They were geared up to stop the run. I like the fact they just hit him quick. A little slant route. All about timing there, partner. Yeah, the timing, everything well executed. Love now to pass on first down. A short throw to Musgrave, and he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Well, that's always a good place to throw it, just because he's one of the biggest targets, not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, 
the really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. On play action, love to throw. He's got his target, that's complete. And he's gonna have the Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. On the counter, here's Jones. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. 38-yard line, second and nine. Love now. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. Love with it here, third and short yardage. Looking deep here for Dobbs. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. On now is the Packers punter, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Play fake, Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Cousins. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Cousins. Pressure and down he goes. Devontae Wyatt. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Pass complete to Osborne. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And a big 32-yard play on third. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. 
to throw is Cousins. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Cousins to throw it. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Throwing. Cousins. Got his man. That's Harry. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 18. A third down gain of 19. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To the air again, it's Cousins. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long, and this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal because just a few plays ago, it looked like they were headed towards the end zone. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hookup and set up a first and goal. First and goal from just inside the five. Madison will score. Touchdown, Vikings. So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows its versatility and gets both done on this drive. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Love. That's caught by the rookie, Jaden Reed. Still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Packers! Jaden Reed, 75 yards. And the Packers 
Pirates are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Carlson's extra point up and good. And we are tied at seven. Decent return out to the 27-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start on the ground with Madison. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Kenny Clark, the big D tackle there to make the stop. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Throwing his cousins. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Devontae Wyatt. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. And here's Ryan right now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. And it'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. These two teams all tied after one. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football. From the 42 now, here's second and two. As they've got it as we resume action. Play fake. Here's Love. Dancing to his left. Pass the 20. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Get all the yards you needed and then some. And made that snap a huge success. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now Love. He'll go over the middle to Reed complete. And that's good for a pickup of two. 
10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Now the fourth year man from BC, it's A.J. Dillon. And he'll take this into the end zone for the Green Bay touchdown. A.J. Dillon taking it in from four yards out. And the Packers have taken the lead. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time, he had the speed to win that race. Now Carlson for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was A.J. Dillon who capped it off with a touchdown run. So now Carlson, after the touchdown, called on to send this one away. Kenny Nwagu now out of his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. So one play and they're already just shy of midfield. They'll go Madison up the middle. And this will be taken across midfield and into Green Bay territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this down to the 40. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Here's Madison running on first down. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That burst good for 20 and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? They work now on second and nine. To throw, Cousins. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. Cousins. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Wish 
Rashawn Gary that time fighting free and getting to the quarterback. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball off his hands a lot quicker. The kick by Joseph is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Joseph now to kick this one away. Nixon now from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, Offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Now a second and six. Again, it's Jones. Oh, an absolutely filthy joke. He's got some space now. Takes it across the 40-yard line. 59 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And Brandon, you know that expression, he just does what he does? <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Love going to give this one to Jones. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. On second down, it's Jones. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. 17 yards on the play there as the Packers have the first down as well. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. After the run by Jones, here's first and 10. Hands it off out of the gun. Oh, able to avoid him. so far and that's just more of the same right here all he needs just a little crease and off he goes Carlson on for the extra point it's good and it's 21 10 
So that drives seven plays in length. And the last play in the drive was a touchdown run by Aaron Jones. So after the made field goal, here's Carlson to send it away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll find Osborne here. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Cousins now. He'll find Harry on the right side. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Holding offense. Well, they've already allowed three sacks in this first half. Now a holding penalty. So I think drastic measures had to be taken, right? The regular it was not working. He was getting hit almost every snap it felt like. They had to try and keep him upright. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Who moving from his tight end spot there. Do you think that perhaps the play call was for him? And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And just like that, it's third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Cousins. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. Oh, and that's kind of how it's gone for him so far. That was a ball they needed to get back in this game. A quick strike, a big play. But he led his guy too far, and it winds up over his head. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. So a six-carry drive, the last go-around touchdown on the end of it. We'll see if they can duplicate that here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep a ball in the booth just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it, is it heavy? Is it that heavy? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light, right? So keep giving it to him and let him do his work. It's not going to slow him down. If it's light for me, it's definitely light for him. Here's second and ten. On play action. Love to throw. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Third and two. Love looking to throw it. And he's caught. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the 
first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. On first and 10, Love. Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. To pass, here's Jordan Love. Looking deep here for Dobbs. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. This offense is looking very comfortable here in this first half. Very relaxed, very smooth, very efficient. No wasted motions. Things are definitely going their way. And they continue to move the ball downfield. So now, following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. They will throw again here with Jordan Love. He's got Watson. It's caught. Touchdown, Packers. 10 yards on the touchdown pass. And the Packers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Carlson's extra point up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. A drive that time of six plays. And it was all capped off by a touchdown catch from Christian Watson. Carlson back out there now to send this one away. Taking it at about the one. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Vikings gonna take over now late in this first half. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling, three score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. This one caught by Osborne, right side. The Vikings gonna signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Cousins. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Cousins to throw it. Complete to Addison on the out route. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Cousins now to throw on first down. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. 
Cousins again. They'll get this underneath to Madison. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. To throw is Cousins. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. And likely time for one final play here in the half, so they will go for it on fourth down. Final play of the half, Cousins. He's going to throw one up for the end zone. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So that P.I. call will give him one more play. And it'll be an untimed play as well. Now the half will end after this one, unless there's another, there's another defensive one. penalty. Joseph's got it, and that will do it for this first half. So we're at halftime here at Lambeau with the Packers taking the lead to the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was an excellent first half from quarterback Jordan Love. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Now the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start pulling back, they've got to start putting more pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. Now Cousins. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this up across the 30-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Cousins. Over the middle and complete to Addison. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. 
just what they need, Electric from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Again, it's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they have any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half. They're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And they will take over first and 10. Jordan Love ready on first down here. He hits Dobbs on the crosser. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field. And that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. An inside give to Jones. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. The speed of Jordan Hicks on display there as he gets the tackle for loss. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. I guess that was a little better. He got back to the line of scrimmage there after the loss on first down, but now you're still dealing with a third and long. So let's put on our offense coordinator hat. They've been very aggressive against the run the last two plays. I'm thinking screen right here. Let them come get the quarterback and dump it off, and there could be some room to roam. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. On now is the Packers punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. On oh, the return is Powell. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Here's second and seven. Throwing Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. It'll go as a gain of four. And now it's third and three. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quay Walker, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Green Bay returning on offense, led by running back Aaron Jones. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Defensively, Harrison Phillips there to stop him. 
If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. Now a quick slant as the throw is complete. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 yards for number 11. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Love with a give to Dillon. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. From the 31, here's second and nine. Love now. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And the Vikings are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. So a potential momentum shifter there, working with a two-score lead, third quarter, but that not the smartest of throws. I would agree with you on that one because this game is still very much in the balance. It felt pretty one-sided to this point, but now if these guys can turn this turnover into points, things could start getting a little more interesting. And now out comes Minnesota. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 right at the 30. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. But it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it makes it third down and two yards to go. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. For the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. Cousins. He gets it to Addison. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Now we'll give to Madison. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing his Cousins. And that is incomplete. Green Bay up to the task there in coverage and forcing a fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. From the left hash, this from 46. The kick by Joseph is good. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. 
Well, the three points certainly helps, but you feel like, Charles, at this stage of the game, when you force those turnovers, you need to start converting them into touchdowns. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised myself because I thought in this situation they were thinking end zone or bust. Now they got to rely on their defense to get the ball back again for another opportunity to get six points. Joseph now to kick this one away. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that, down the numbers. There he goes. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 41 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. They went with a nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five cents, five DBs. But what also happens then? You take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you take a big off for a little. And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that defense. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Love now on second down. Open man is Musgrave, the tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 20-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. A nice chunk play from the tight end position, and it illustrates the cohesiveness that he and his quarterback have. Both saw the extra defender doubling him up, and they still combined for the completion and big gain. Lambeau Field, one of the best home field advantages in the NFL, no doubt. And they're a happy bunch here as the Packers lead third quarter. And the Packers are going to be set up with a first and goal as strong running gets them to the nine-yard line. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Throwing. Love. Towards the middle and caught by Musgrave. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get a head of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Now a handoff, running left is Jones. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even... Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And the Vikings are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to nerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides, but to see the ball in the running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. 
The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Second and six. Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'm guaranteeing he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Cousins now. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. And this dominant defensive performance continued on that play. This poor quarterback. He's now received the protection he needs and has had to pick himself up off the turf far too often. Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. So just three yards on the completion there. And yeah, that will bring up second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it, trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. On third down, Love. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Packers. A big play there. 63 yards, and the Packers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And he's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. So now Carlson, after the touchdown, called on to send this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. 
Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. A second down throw for Cousins. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Cousins again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Now Cousins. a little grabbing, a little hand fighting by any means necessary on third down. He was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he is caught. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw, Cousins. This is caught by Addison. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Seven catches for him now in this last one, the first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. They have their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. In motion right is Osborne. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. 
A slot man in motion right. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one him, may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. And they try to catch him by surprise there on third down, but this defense, they were all over the jet sweep. And it's oftentimes all about what you're doing on the backside of the defense, whether it's the defensive end or the outside backer, who's setting the edge. And if they don't get blown off the line of scrimmage, they can really wreck a play. And in this case, they were able to make the tackle for a loss as a result. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. Joseph now to kick this one away. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Love going to break the huddle, lead the Packers up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. going to wind up incomplete. That one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Love. Now this aired out deep for Reed. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception, but playing this way is what got them this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It'll be a net of only 30 here. 40-yard punt, 10 on the return. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. To throw is Cousins. His throw incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Throwing again, Cousins on second and 10. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. On third down, Cousins. Got a man open. That's Harry. And this won't be enough. A good secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down as the defense couldn't come up with a big play. In fact, they got six more than they needed. A gain of eight on fourth and two.
To the air again, it's Cousins. Packer pressure, and down he goes. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. A partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And now another one thrown incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. They'll throw again, Cousins. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped, surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to and maybe his rhythm got is just off, he's got know. thrown off? He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine and go play. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Now Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. All the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. And now they're in the hurry-up. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And that is incomplete. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. Kevin O'Connell has a play call ready. His guys going for it on fourth. They're going for it. Here's Madison. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So still over three minutes remaining in this game. But boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing. So they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. They'll try and run some clock now with Jones. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. 
Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Now, this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's a give to Jones running left. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. On now is the Packers punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. So Cousins and the Vikings down by 16, a minute 52 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. A first down throw for Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. That was one they needed to connect on. They're down, but not quite out. So you have to figure, with under two minutes to play, they need to hit on something in very short order. Another try, second and 10 now. Here's Cousins. Pass complete, it's Hawkinson. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards, do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. The Lambeau faithful making as much noise as they can. It's third down. Throwing his Cousins. Got his man, that's Harry. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big time player himself. They brought it from start to finish and really helped get the better of the opposing secondary. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way that pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. What terrifies defense is when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. On first and 10, Cousins. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Passing lanes, tough to come by with so many defensive backs on the field here late in the game. And it's not just the number of bodies, it's their quickness and their agility that makes it tough to complete a pass. Well, this crowd is making an impact right now. Third and 10. Again, it's Cousins. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one. Not to have another turnover on his ledger. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. Now first and goal. Cousins. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. And down here, first and goal. If it's not there, don't force it. You've got at least two, if not three more shots at it. So that's a wise move to get rid of it. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. One last shot now for Cousins. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. So a win here for the Packers, and it was all thanks to the play of their veteran quarterback. Yeah, he was in complete control of this offense. He had three touchdown passes on the afternoon. And to be honest, he really made it look easy out there.